I'm Paul Carroll, the Editor-in-Chief of Insurance Thought Leadership. I'm here with Kevin Kalinich of Aon, and we're talking about cyber, which seems to be such a hot topic these days. I guess I'd, I'd start with why now? What, it seems like there's a whole confluence of events that has made cyber just a really hot topic. Uh, a convergence of um, three different things has made the topic of cyber particularly relevant now. Um, one, the growth in data breach disclosure laws, which require entities to disclose a breach. Um, two is that the, um, there have been publicized losses now with actual financial statement impact. And three, it's become a board of directors management level issue. Okay. Tell us a little bit about what Aon is, is doing in this area. So Aon tries to look at a more comprehensive macro level solution. It's not a one size fits all that you should just buy this insurance policy or that insurance policy. First, you have to take a look at what the particular exposures are of an organization and then determine whether you need to do some type of analytics to try and quantify and qualify what those exposures are. Take a look at your existing insurance to see if you already have some coverage and then try and identify gaps in your existing coverage. Can you give us an example of somebody who started one place and wound up someplace else that was a, a better spot by taking this sort of holistic approach you're talking about? Sure. So. Um, over the last few years, retailers, healthcare, education, and financial institutions, they've identified that they have a large exposure because they have quite a few customers or patients with personal identifiable information. More recently, manufacturing companies and hospitality companies realize that they're highly dependent on a supply chain, and that supply chain could be impacted by um, cyber exposures. Sure. It's not just you that you have to worry about. You have to worry about everybody you associate with because the, the transfer of data is such that, that anybody can be a breach. And, and the people that you need to take into account include your suppliers of your component parts. It includes your partners, your subcontractors, your employees, your distribution um, chain if you have a distribution chain. And a new element that is becoming particularly important for every entity are third-party vendors. So in the old days, most companies handled their own information technology, had their own servers, their own computers. Now there's become a growth in third-party vendors such as cloud computing, big data analytics, social media, and mobile technology. Right, very convenient, but also more vulnerable. It, it seems to me that Maybe not more vulnerable. Oh, okay. So okay. That, that's a, a little bit of a misnomer. Um, so if you're an entity, that makes widgets, your XYZ widget manufacturing company. And what, what's your main business? Widgets. So if you're doing your IT security and you're doing IT, that's an ancillary secondary business. If you outsource that to a cloud provider that spends 24 7, 365 in cloud computing, you may have actually enhanced and increased your IT security and lowered your exposures right. by outsourcing. It seems to me that there also is a growing realization that no matter how good you are, you're not safe. I mean, there, there just are just enough knuckleheads out there who want to do stuff, and there are enough people out there doing stuff for profit that you can be pretty sure that no matter how much effort you put into security, that you're vulnerable to a breach. Is that right? Um, it, that's not inaccurate, but at Ann, instead of just trying to um, scare everybody into the sky is falling and there's all sorts of vulnerabilities, we try and put two and two together to say, okay, if there are those vulnerabilities, What's the financial statement impact? So I think that the, the question is not, are there vulnerabilities no matter what you do? Yes, there are. But what could be the potential impact of those vulnerabilities, and how can you mitigate the financial statement impact of those vulnerabilities? OK, makes sense. So where do you see us five years from now? As we all know, technology marches on, new devices, more powerful devices, and so forth. So is it possible to, to take a look into your crystal ball, aggregate all that, and offer some projection on where we'll be? So I had a, an entity inquire as whether I'd be interested in joining the entity. Um, and I asked them what their, their game plan was. And they said, it is to take board games and put them online instead of playing board games. And if you run out of fake money, you put in more real money to get more fake money. And I said, that's the most <laughs> ridiculous concept I've ever heard of. Yeah. And the company made $640 million the next year. Okay. So I don't consider myself the <laughs> expert on what's going to happen in five years. At the end of my um, 
presentations or seminars after um, people understand there are these vulnerabilities and they do have a financial statement impact and it could be a director's and officer's lawsuit for breach of fiduciary duty, at the end of the um, presentations they ask me, what, so what do you recommend? What should we do? And so to answer your five years from now question, I would say hire um, three or four 13 year olds and watch the way they interact <laughs> every day and watch the way they think because it's being built into the DNA to have instantaneous interactive um, collaboration and aggregation and dissemination of information. And there's gonna be an increase in the use of technology and an increase in reliance on information assets. So this is not like the Y2K issue where it was a one-time um, event. This will impact every company that relies on technology and information assets. So I think I just heard you uh, offer my teenager a job, is that right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks Kevin, this is great.